let me be very clear. Their arbitrary detention is completely unacceptable, as is the lack of transparency around these court proceedings. Our top priority remains securing their release. We will continue to work tirelessly to bring them home as soon as possible. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau talking about Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor. The fate of both men remains uncertain. Spavor was put on trial Friday after more than two years in custody, but the Chinese court produced no verdict. Canadian diplomats were kept out of the courtroom and away from the courthouse. Michael Kovrig is set to go on trial on Monday. Both Canadians accused of spying. Their detention widely seen as Chinese retaliation for Canada's arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou on an extradition request from the U.S. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Lynette, Lynette Ong. She's in Toronto. She's with the Monk School of Global Affairs. Lynette, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, John. Let's talk about the uh, what we saw in the case of uh, Michael Spavor on Friday, and which, as far as we know, we know nothing. Michael Kovrig's trial is set to get underway on Monday. What do we know about that? It's a it's a very opaque trial, so um, no, no, you know, no foreign diplomats were allowed into the court, even though I think our consular agreement, as I understand, actually provide access, uh, allow access for our diplomats uh, to this sort of co uh, court, court proceedings. So China is apparently violating all the rules in order to keep it opaque. This further suggests that uh, this is a highly politicized case, not any sort of uh, average criminal trial. Are you at all optimistic that Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver will eventually be released? Let's put it this way. I am not totally pessimistic. So some observers have suggested, you know, over 99% conviction rate for trials like this. But I think we also have to bear in mind that these are highly politicized trials. So the average statistics might not actually apply to Michael's. Of course, we should be, you know, mentally and psychologically prepared for the worst. But I think we also should be open to a range of uh, different outcomes, from the very best to the very worst, or some, or somewhere in between. Much depends on the political arm wrestling going on behind the scene. Well, let's talk about that behind the scenes arm wrestling, because uh, a lot of people wonder: Canada, a middle power, what options does it have to help these two men? That's a great. That's a great question. Um, Canada is a, is a middle power, but it's a it's a democracy. We have uh, values to preserve and values to stand for, and these sort of the democratic values are very much worth uh, fighting for. And values are also could also help us rally allies. So I think you know, um, with the new Biden administration, uh, release of the two Michaels are on the agenda with the meeting in in Alaska. The question is, how high a priority does does this case actually actually uh, receive? Um, and of course, you know, China, China is very mightily powerful these days. It has got you know money and power to buy up influence. But I think you know, with values, uh, we have a lot to be fighting for. As you know, Canada has managed to rally a number of allies to uh, act against uh, Chinese actions, or at least to speak out against them. Um, it, take us behind the scenes of, of, of what the Chinese government may be thinking about this. Is, is Canada's ability to rally a number of allies to condemn their actions uh, anything that they're at all worried about? Yes, I think a few things might be in China's calculation right now. One is the show of strength. We saw that clearly on display in the opening statements in in Alaska uh, versus uh, Secretary of State Blinken. Uh, I think you know show of strength is absolutely important, which is why we need to let these court proceedings go through because there's no there's no way that they would back down now and and cancel the procedure. But second thing is. Once that fo follows through, I think they will be thinking about costs and benefits of really convicting and following through the sentences. Um, I think, you know, China will be thinking they have a lot to lose because this is not just of interest to Canada. I think a lot of Western democracies and countries all around the world are actually watching this case very, very closely. Should them be convicted and sentences, uh, people will be very wary about engaging with China, you know, trading, sending people there, studying and even you know going to china for leisurely purposes 
you know, so I think these are a range of uh, costs and benefits that they are actually cons considering. Lynette, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I just want to ask you, what are you watching for next in this case? Um, I'll be watching for, you know, Alaska meeting. I'll be watching for statement coming out of Trudeau's government, U.S. government, as well as Chinese government. But again, with these sort of signals, I think signals could also be sent purposely uh, to confuse people. So, you know, a range of different things uh, going going on there. So we may not know until we know. Lynette Ong. Precisely. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Lynette Ong is with the Monk School of Global Affairs, and she joined us from Toronto.